So welcome everybody to Optimization in Oslo. We're very happy to have Boris Mordechovic from Wayne State University here with us today. Boris is going to speak about uh, some new uh, semi-smooth or generalized Newton methods and in, in in that's with optimization. Um, and uh, I guess with, uh, with that, Boris, the floor is yours. Okay, 50 minutes, right? Yeah, about 50 minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Thomas. Actually, it's my great pleasure to be here and to see uh, people, you know, uh, in, in your group. And uh, uh, Thomas is my old friend, uh, you know, a long time ago. I, as, I was happy to be in his dissertation committee even. Uh, and in fact, you know, in this talk, some of his results are going to be, uh, you know, at least, you know, I mentioned them uh, about something which is important. But uh, this uh, talk is about uh, Newton methods uh, for uh, some problems of uh, non-smooth optimization, uh, you know, second order uh, uh, stuff. And uh, uh, I'm going to use some uh, some uh, developments in variation analysis, which in particular Thomas been involved quite strongly. Uh, and uh, then uh, if something uh, is not uh, immediately clear uh, from my talk, please feel free to interrupt me anytime. And it will be a real pleasure. Uh, don't wait uh, for questions till the end of the talk. Okay, then we are talking about a generalized Newton method. But let me remind you first about classical Newton method, which everybody is familiar, one of the most popular and most efficient methods in optimization. And it's related to uh, uh, optimization of uh, C2 smooth function, uh, twice uh, continuously differentiable function. Then classical Newton methods actually uh, aims at solving a gradient equation, gradient equation of this type, uh, which actually is stationary condition uh, for optimization problem, but maybe important for their own sake. And uh, the idea of uh, uh, Newton methods is as follows. Iteration is built uh, by using this simple uh, algorithm, uh, xk plus one equals xk plus some direction dk, for each case, starting with some given point, x naught, uh, given point, where direction should be found. And direction dk is a solution of the system of linear equations uh, given here. Uh, this linear equations, uh, uh, then uh, we need to solve this equation to get uh, dk. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, when we have a uh, nice Hessian, this classical Hessian. Uh, mm, actually, everything is finite dimension now. Uh, that we hope to develop this infinite dimension problems, but so far, if finite dimension, then this equation definitely has solution uh, when we do have uh, invertibility of the classical Hessian. Uh, but actually, Newton methods behaves nicely uh, when uh, we have positive uh, positive definiteness of the Hessian. The uh, Hessian matrix is positive definite. Then uh, we have that this equation is well-defined. We can find uh, dk and uh, sequences of iteration xk converge uh, super linearly uh, to some solution x bar of this equation, or even quadratically. We can get quadratic convergence if a starting point x naught uh, is chosen uh, properly, sufficiently close to x bar. That it is a local method in general. And as I mentioned, Hessian matrix is positive definite. That's condition for classical Newton methods, which is a local method of optimization, uh, which is pretty efficient. If we are lucky to find uh, starting point, the starting point uh, uh, good enough, uh, then uh, we have a very good uh, performance, very good convergence, solubility, everything. Then to achieve global convergence, there are several tricks uh, how to get global convergence. And uh, one uh, of this uh, most popular um, approach to get global convergence is to, uh, to use so-called Armija rule. Then uh, we consider next iteration xk plus one uh, in uh, uh, about same uh, form, but with some kind of factor, uh, tau k. 
when tau k uh, is uh, tau k is chosen by using Armija rule from this equation, from this inequality. That's standard, you know, approach. And uh, sigma here is a number uh, between zero and one half. Uh, that's what we have. Uh, then uh, this method is known as a backtracking line search, and we are talking about damped Newton methods in classical situation. Then there are different quasi-Newton methods. Uh, where uh, we do not need to compute the Hessian exactly uh, because it may be uh, it may be expensive work. Uh, then quasi Newton methods are uh, built in such a form that we have next iteration x k plus one equal to x k plus some tau k d k when uh, d k uh, is uh, founded uh, could be founded from this equation with h k. When HK, capital HK, is some approximation of the Hessian, that we may not uh, compute uh, the Hessian matrix, but take some good approximation. That's family of quasi-Newton methods. Then uh, one of this uh, quasi-Newton methods, which is called regularized Newton methods, uh, which is built in such a form. Uh, we consider here formally a uh, Hessian, but then uh, plus some mu k uh, uh, is identity matrix when mu k is built in such a form. It means proportional to, uh, to the norm of the gradient. And in this case, we have advantages uh, in local, in global convergence, uh, actually local as well, we have advantages that we may have only positive semi-definiteness of the Hessian, uh, as a condition for nice behavior, but not positive definiteness. That's what uh, uh, known as a regularized Newton method. Uh, and then what we are going to do, uh, we are going to consider problems which are not C2 smooth. Uh, then uh, uh, they have some non-smoothness, at least in the second order. And then instead of a classical Hessian, which is not available, or approximation of classical Hessian, we would like to use some construction from variational analysis, which called generalized Hessian, or sometimes second order subdifferential. And notation is here. This is notation of this construction, which of course goes back to classical Hessian uh, if uh, we have C2 smooth function, but if not, it is some mapping, which is uh, not linear, but positive homogeneous, and uh, we have some uh, rules to compute this guy and to have some calculus rule, and I'm going to talk about it. Okay, and then, uh, you know, what we are going to do, we would like to design uh, some local uh, convergence, generalized Newton, with superlinear convergence rate uh, for not just arbitrarily minimizers, if talking about optimization problem, but for so-called tilt uh, stable minimizers under some stability conditions which have been recognized in optimization, I'm going to talk about in more details. And first we do it for class of C11 uh, function. C11 means that we have a uh, continuous differentiable function with Lipschitz and gradient called C11. Then it's not uh, C2, uh, it means gradient is not differentiable, uh, but Lipschitz continuous. It, it is actually a very nice class of uh, functions which use an optimization C11. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to use uh, second order sub differential or some kind of graphical derivative, which I'm going to talk a little bit if time permits. Uh, then, then after that, when we, uh, which we do for C11, we are going to consider a more general class of function, uh, phi. I'm sorry, I will say phi like Americans say, right? You know, phi, you know, I grew up with phi, I'm from Russia, and you know, guys also say phi, but let's let's talk uh, American very badly, you know, to kill this language. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, it's class of prox regular functions. This is interesting class of function, which is dominating class in second order analysis, which includes convex function and many other good functions. I'll talk a little bit more about it. And of course, C11 function in non-convex, and it covers problem of constraint optimization. Uh, and then uh, we are going to, de to design some uh, superlinearly convergence algorithm for solving uh, e e inclusion. Uh, may not be just equations, but inclusion, because this 
sub differential which is set valid for convex function, for example, and for more general function. And then we can proceed uh, with solving a uh, class of problems of this type. And then we are going to do globalization. Then consider globally converged generalized uh, damped Newton methods with using uh, backtracking line search, first for C11 optimization, and then uh, to elevate uh, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, for um, uh, proxy regular function, for general stuff. Okay, uh, and then consider several type of algorithm here. Then we would like to uh, apply this uh, a stuff for problems what called convex composite optimization. And this very interesting class of problem, which represented in, uh, in the way, in, in a, uh, some kind of a structured uh, way, sum of two functions, one is composition of convex function and C, uh, uh, C2 function, uh, another is uh, nice C2 function, but it's important class of problems, especially for various applications to machine learning. And then finally, we uh, consider uh, some uh, application uh, to the whole stuff with calculation, with numerical experience to solving some problems of what called NASA problems. This is very important class of uh, problems uh, which appears in machine learning and in statistics. They, uh, this class of problems have uh, been in, uh, around uh, for you know, maybe 20 years and now there are many uh, approaches to solve these problems, many methods, we are going to apply our machinery and to compare with other well-known methods of numerical optimization uh, with first order and second order algorithm with uh, numerical experience and some, uh, you know, you know, some computation, uh, just solve problem to the end. Okay, that's what we are going to do. Uh, then, uh, then I need to uh, review some notion of variation and analysis and actually, uh, you know, don't have time and not need to proceed in details. Say, uh, Thomas is familiar much and some of you guys may not be familiar, but it can be found in the books, you know, the uh, book of Rockefeller and Wetz, uh, uh, 98 and uh, two books of uh, written by, by me uh, 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 in 2006, uh, two volume uh, stuff uh, in infinite dimension analysis. And uh, this more recent book in uh, uh, 2018, uh, where you can find everything about it. Then, uh, you know, basic construction is what normal core or negative normal cone, which is obtained in such, uh, such a form. Uh, what we are going to do, we would like to get normal cone uh, to given point X bar, which belongs to set omega. And then we do this kind of approximation procedure. First, we compute a uh, projection uh, of uh, point X K nearby uh, uh, to the set omega and take any element of projection. In finite dimension it exists. Of course, always when omega is closed, which we assume in infinite dimension, uh, should be some modification. There are also stuff developed in infinite dimension. And then we consider uh, some span, actually, uh, you know, actually cone, not span, but cone spent on this projection. And when this linear approximation, uh, you know, converges to V, it is exactly our uh, limiting normals. In general, this uh, cone may be non Convex. For convex set, we have classical normal cone of convex analysis, but for simple set, like for example, graph of absolute value X or epigraph of function negative absolute value X, we have non-convexity, but a cone, close cone, uh, but non-convex, but it's okay because we have good calculus. Calculus have been developed for all these constructions, and these calculus are based on variational principles. That's the main machinery of variation analysis, to use some optimization. You know, uh, for calculus, we use some optimization ideas. And it works in both finite and infinite dimension. If somebody is interested, uh, uh, you can find in this book everything written uh, for this construction, but that's kind of schematic stuff. Then co-derivative is important construction, uh, which related to normal cone to the graph of this mapping. 
to the graph. It, again, it's simple. Uh, it is, uh, you know, in, uh, for single valid and you know, for set valid, good calculus is there. Then for C11 fun for C1 function, for smooth function, we have uh, co-derivative reduced to a joint Jacobian. This is transposition, uh, a joint operator. Then we have linear single valid. In more general situation of this non-smoothness or set valid, we have some positive homogeneous metric, but again, we have full calculus for this type. And also for sub-differential, then one of the uh, approach to subdifferential to derive in terms of normal comp to the epigraph. That's what we can do. But there are some other approaches using some limiting procedure. Again, that's a lot of machinery and probably is not a uh, you know, good idea to discuss this uh, all the time. And we can apply for function which what called extended real variant. They may take uh, values of infinity. It is a convenient tool, for example, to cover problem of constraint optimization. Then, uh, or just sets. When we have a set, we can associate with a set a function uh, which is equal to zero when point belong to the set and equal to infinity otherwise. In this case, we can you know, cover sets as extended real valid function. Then again, what is uh, most important stuff that despite non-convexity, we have full calculus for all these guys. And calculus is most important things uh, because, you know, even in classical analysis, we, sell, we, we call calculus, right? That calculus, all these rules, how to proceed. And uh, now it has been understood quite well and applied in many situations. Then on top, we need some second order subdifferential or generalized Hesha. And this is approach like, uh, you know, derivative of derivative, like in classical analysis, but in our case, first derivative is sub-differential, set valid metrics. Then on top on first derivative, we consider derivative, co-derivative. And we use co-derivative because it's dual type construction, actually dual to none, uh, because uh, it is non-convex and they cannot be obtained by duality from tangent con and direction derivative. This is construction which are non-convex, require a different approach, and we can get in fact better result for this dual type construction than for primal construction. Again, everything is written if somebody is interested in that we may look at them. In the case of C2 function, we have classical Hessian linearly applied to uh, direction U. Okay, but when we have C11 function, which I mentioned, we have such a relationship that second order subdifferential actually it is first order subdifferential of the scalarization. Then here's the formula, scalarized formula, which is useful for uh, considering this stuff and computation. Okay, but even in more general case, when we don't have C11, we have more general function, extended real valid, we have good calculus. Calculus is behind, and it is kind of justification of this construction. And don't look at the formulas, it's a definition, but we have calculus behind. And then, actually, this secretary subdifferential can be fully computed for uh, major classes of functions. In particular, uh, uh, Thomas did this very nice job in his dissertation to compute uh, this guy uh, for, uh, uh, say, for nonlinear system. Uh, when uh, indeed is, uh, you know, under some condition, we have full computation in terms of initial data and covers many problems in nonlinear programming and more. And actually, there are for uh, computation for SDP, uh, for what called contract, second order contragramming, and many other systems which are, uh, it appears in application. We can do application here uh, to this machine learning as well. I think Boris just yes. because maybe not everyone's so familiar, but most people are familiar with the concept of an adjoint, right? From from optimization, right? So usually for an adjoint, you need to have lots of differentiability. But what these concepts give you is essentially the ability to calculate adjoint-like objects when you don't necessarily have the smoothness that you would, let's say, uh, expect in controller optimization. So that's basically why this is so useful. So, yeah, thank you, Thomas. Indeed, actually, we we pass. Uh, in general, uh, we pass uh, by this uh, uh, direction derivative of something. We consider a joint, but uh, we have better machinery for a joint. It's interesting. If we can treat it as a, a, a dual world, it is better than driver one. Okay. <laughs> you can see it like this. This is all your idea. Oh, okay. Uh, then, uh, then, actually, again, I pass, bypass the stuff, and uh, uh, let's uh, go ahead. 
Then class of function, which again, very well understood in variation, and that is called prox regularity, prox regular function. Then this definition for extended real variant function, and we say that fun, uh, actually this function phi, maybe phi, is prox regular at some point from the domain. And domain means you know, those points when function is finite. For example, indicator function is finite uh, when point belongs to the set, and otherwise we have infinity. But we uh, deal uh, you know, with constraint problems, we can uh, reduce to uh, extended real value function. Then, uh, when we have this probability for some uh, subgradient uh, V bar, uh, if function of phi is lower semi continuous, uh, and uh, we have such uh, uh, such an, an inequality. Then when rho here, it's factor of proximality. When rho is zero, we have convex functions. But when rho is not zero, we have, you know, we have minus here. And it's much bigger class of functions, which actually is bridge uh, between uh, uh, C2 and uh, uh, convex function. And it, it includes many many functions which indeed appears in application. The so-called, you know, amenable structure, of course, convexity is always there, uh, but uh, there are several class of functions which uh, appears in composite optimization. And again, it's well, well understood. Actually, this concept appears first in geometric measure theory in the 50s, and people were not familiar uh, with this in optimization. And it, was kind of you know uh, revisited uh, in a sense uh, you know that completely new stuff appears there in relation analysis but now it's uh, fully understood uh, this class of function fully understood and uh, we may say that any interesting function is proxy that's what we can say like that okay uh, then another notion which was introduced by Terry Rockefeller uh, he's a major figure uh, in a uh, major player in, in this area and his student, uh, René Polican, uh, you know, the notion of tilt stability. Tilt stability, it's not arbitrarily minimizer, but minimizer we, which has some structure, which actually important for numerical methods. And what kind of structure we have for tilt stability? Then we consider uh, you know, initial function phi, and then we tilt this function, this parameter V, linearly, canonically. And then we consider this uh, perturbed function, tilted function. Uh, and uh, tilt stability requires that locally this function uh, has unique solution. It means uh, minimum is unique and evolves uh, ellipses in ellipses continuous way. Then starting with a given x bar, and then under this tilt perturbation, it evolves a uh, single valid uh, way and uh, you know, Lipschitz continuous. That notion of tilt stability. Now we know everything about tilt stability. This notion was introduced long time ago, but not well, not has not been well understood in more recent time. Uh, now we have full characterization of this uh, notion for various classes of problems, uh, starting from nonlinear programming and then different problems of conic programming and uh, many other stuff here. And for this, uh, we have good, in terms of the second order sub differential, we have good characterization of this motion for a class of uh, prox regular function. Then, uh, characterization of this motion is uh, that second order sub differential is just positive derivative. That full characterization of this motion. And now, of course, when we have calculus of this guy, uh, we can proceed with application to structural problems. But of course, we need to compute second order sub differential. That's an important point to use. And we can do it in, uh, for classes of structural problems in terms of the given data because of the calculus. That's what we can do. And now, quite recently, Terry Rockefeller is 88 and a half. And yeah, he's pretty active, you know, it's interesting, right? You know, he did in, uh, several years ago, and now more and more paper coming. Uh, you know, he uh, revisited this notion, and he uh, interpreted a strong variation complexity. That's another thing for another talk, but it's nicely uh, developed stuff uh, here. <clears throat> then, uh, now the first algorithm. 
The first algorithm, uh, it actually is in the paper with my former student, uh, Bradim Sarabi, published in uh, SciOpt in 2021. <clears throat> Here, uh, first result, uh, first algorithm. Then we start with some point x naught, and then, uh, you know, when we have stationary point, we stop. If not, it's for C1 function for, you know, this second order non-smooth function, but good function. Then now we consider this uh, equation, which is indeed substitute classical uh, Newton equation. In this case, what do we have? Uh, uh, we consider uh, solving this system. Now, uh, in the case of classical uh, uh, C2 function, we have here a classical Hessian. But now we have scalarization of our gradient uh, mapping. Then this is a guy we need to solve this. You know, if it's solvable, we need to provide some condition when this equation is solved, uh, inclusion is solved, and then we proceed uh, like in classical way. Okay, that's the important part. New part is here. Okay, and then uh, uh, we need to for for uh, superlinear convergence, we need to involve some notion. Uh, uh, in uh, variation analysis, which was recently introduced by uh, Helmut Pfeffer from Austria and Iji Altshaka from, from Prague, Czech Republic. They introduced this notion of semi-smoothness star. And actually, uh, some of you, and uh, 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 Thomas for sure, are familiar with semi-smoothness, this classical notion of numerical optimization, semi-smooth Newton or something. Uh, but it's applied to Lipschitz and single valid methods. Condition which was introduced by uh, Helmut and Ije, uh, they consider actually set valid method, and they call this semi smooth star. And they introduce in terms of co-derivative. Again, this is just definition. What is behind? Behind is very good calculus of this notion, computation, everything is available here. And then, uh, you know, because co-derivative has good calculus, we have, you know, some projected calculus for this notion. Then for class of single valued Lipschitz and Matic, we come back to classical semi-smoothness, provided that function is direction differential, or mapping is direction differential. But in the case of set valued Matic, or even, uh, you know, non-Lipschitz function, we have more, and now it has been developed in many papers, you know, although it is 2021, but now there are a huge number of papers which are related to this notion. And in particular, now I'm finishing my book on second order variation analysis. There's a lot of stuff you know, related to the six here. Then, uh, in this situation, uh, first result, then when we have C11 function, uh, and we consider uh, a seeking. Uh, for not arbitrary minimizer, but tilt stable minimizer. We are looking you know, to find something which is stable, not just minimized, it's essential. Then we can say that this algorithm is well-defined and we have a superlinear convergence uh, if we have semi-smooth star property of this gradient matrix. In this case, we have everything nicely uh, and uh, then, uh, uh, we can proceed with calculation for this class of function. That's one uh, result. Then there's another approach uh, using what's called subgradient graphical derivative. That's another approach and probably, you know, it's very similar and parallel to this one, but using, an, you know, this de graphical derivative of subgradient may probably I will skip this stuff because it's pretty similar, but this construction is different. This is primary dual construction. Then we have the subgradient, just gradient mapping, and on top we take what's called graphical derivative. It is another construction which doesn't have that very good calculus, but at the same time it can be computed uh, for uh, uh, some class of problems in, in a better way. Okay. Uh, then there are some kind of uh, notion which Taylor Rockefeller introduced a long time ago without any. Uh, uh, any connection with numerical stuff, but it's useful for justification. Okay, that's class of fully amenable function. We have parabolic regularity, you know, skip the stuff. If somebody is interested, I'll be happy to discuss and there are some full reference for this stuff. Okay, then here we have some sub problem because in Newton methods, important to have sub problems. 
uh, to solve. And then some problems is given in terms of this second order derivative, uh, given here what we call parabolic derivative. And uh, we can solve this problem. It is problem, you know, which is much simpler than the original one, because this guy is linear, and this is positive homogeneous. And then uh, we can solve this by, you know, for some class of problems, which is known as extended linear quadratic program, some other stuff, then uh, I will skip the stuff as well. But I would like to say there's some theory behind of this uh, type of algorithm and constructions. Then, you know, that's exactly what I mentioned, we have this convergence. Now, I would like to mention what we can do for uh, the case of prox regular function, when function will call continuously prox regular. Continuous prox regularity, when we have prox regularity plus some property which called subdifferential continuity, it is kind of a general property and holds it most of the time. It's not restriction at all. You know, just forget about it. Say prox regularity. Then to pass from C11 function to prox regular function, there are some trick uh, using Moreau envelope. Moreau envelope, this is construction which appeared in convex analysis uh, introduced by Jean-Jacques Moreau. Uh, but then it has been developed, you know, uh, uh, beyond uh, convex function. Actually, usually uh, definition is like that. Not usually, but exact definition is exactly here. We consider this what called infinite convolution. And important part that we add uh, to function phi, we add this quadratic form. And this quadratic form makes problem regularize. And this approach is called regularization stuff, Moreau envelope, sometimes called Moreau Iashida uh, regularization. But anyhow, there are uh, well-known result in variation analysis. Can be found, for example, in the book of Rockefeller Webbs, uh, which says the following, that when we have prox regular function, uh, then its Moreau envelope is C11. Then using this Moreau envelope, we can proceed uh, at least theoretically, we can proceed to uh, minimization of C11 function for, for which uh, class uh, we develop this algorithm. And then we have about the same result uh, for uh, a prox regular function uh, under assumption which are expressed in terms of the given data without any Moreau envelope. In given data, we need to work with you know, propagation uh, from C11 to uh, Moreau envelope, uh, and then we uh, use this property of semi-smooth star for set valued mapping. Semi-smoothness cannot be applied at all, but semi-smooth star can be used for subdifferential mapping, and then we have superlinear convergence of algorithm, which we discussed before. Okay, that's what we have for this. Yes, uh, so when you when you define algorithm one, you said that the direction dk was um, related to being in, I guess, to go back, it was minus gradient that phi is in the scalarization formula yes. for the co-derivative. Yeah, so, I mean, dk doesn't necessarily have to be unique here, right? Uh, yes, for sure. So, so it not be unique. Pick any. Pick any. Pick any. Right, pick so like any. It means that's what, good question, you know, about this uniqueness, you know, I, I never thought about it, but definitely it's solvable exists important stuff that this yeah. decay exists yeah. and if it exists you can take it can. but of course you know in numerical implement, uh, uh, implementation we need to, to know which yeah. one will be right yeah. Yeah. and that's another issue and again it's solved for specific class of problems mm -hmm. but in principle algorithm works for any direction decay which satisfies this condition mm -hmm. okay that's what we have this equation and for decay we have some we have some formula for decay but it's a rather complicated formula for one of the decades, right? Uh, but it's an interesting question to think about. Okay. Uh, then, uh, of course, in the case when we have classical Newton, uh, then decay, uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. under positive definite, we can uh, solve this Hessian stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but it is more, in any case, it's a lot of room for development. It is uh, just some, uh, uh, some result which uh, would like to present in case if somebody is interested. And there, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, you know, here uh, uh, we have uh, this algorithm, and then we can apply it to constraint optimization uh, of, of this type, for example, when we have minimization of another uh, function of psi of x subject to this constraint, when 
uh, city, maybe you know, just close and convex set, maybe corn, maybe you know, not even corn. And then we have C2, F C2, Psi C2, but this guy is just convex. In this case, you know, we have some algorithm which uh, uh, use some notion of variation analysis known as metric regularity. Me, uh, uh, metric regularity. And this is kind of, you know, if you are familiar with Hoffman estimate is error bound. Error bound, which formal definition is like that, you can linearly estimate, you know, pre-image, uh, you know, this errors, which is a bad guy, in terms of the guy which is written here, uh, which actually distance from Y to image everywhere, which is much easier. And then we have full characterization of this property, uh, which actually I, known as co-derivative or you know, under my name, uh, then it's a characterization like that, co-derivative uh, at the, a given point is equal to zero. And it's full description, full characterization of this property, that we don't need to look at the property, we need to compute co-derivative and check the stuff. And then it's complete characterization of metric regularity, that which is important for our analysis. Because under this guy, uh, when we have... Uh, uh, the things when we have this uh, metric regularity, even weaker condition with metric subregularity, but metric regularity is fine. And here we have, you know, this, you need to solve this problem uh, when decay is defined uniquely in this case. It's a, a question of, of Thomas in this case. You know, we have here computation VK, R, it is parameter of proxy regularity, and WK uh, here. Uh, uh, WK, uh, uh, what is WK here? Sorry. It's a solution of the solution. Right, yeah. yeah, that's exactly solution of this equation. Then we have, you know, this uh, choice of decay. And, uh, you know, and under this metric regularity or even metric subregularity, don't want to discuss in more details, we have nice performance of this algorithm, but still local. Okay, uh, then uh, we also can solve some differential inclusions uh, of prox regular type. Then we have inclusion here. And function phi is just, uh, uh, you know, a prox regular function. In this case, we involve this proximal mapping. And for proximal mapping, uh, we can uh, compute this. It's unique, first of all, and we can compute this stuff for convex function phi. When function is convex, then this guy is well understood and fully computed. There are even depository for computing uh, this prox mapping for uh, various problems, including the major problems of machine learning. Uh, that's what we use here. When it's non-convex, you know, we can use this as well, but it's more involved. In principle, the theory works for general situation, but uh, uh, you know, now we are confident in the case of convex function phi, which is okay as well. In this situation, uh, we have such an algorithm. Uh, we consider some region for starting point. A starting point now is uh, uh, chosen uh, is chosen uh, from from this uh, uh, set, which is range of the operator i identity operator plus lambda subgradient method for phi. When lambda is a parameter which is uh, which is picked from this integral, which is uh, chosen from the integral from zero one over R, uh, and the R is proxy regularity, uh, 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 rates of proxy regularity. Then we consider this stuff, then we compute uniquely VK from solving of this equation, it's always equation, not inclusion, because we have, you know, this guy, it's not only for convex, for general uh, uh, class under consideration, this is uh, unique. And then we have this equation, uh, inclusion, in terms of second order subdifferential, and then we proceed in standard way. Okay, we have such uh, Newton uh, uh, inclusion is now replaced by this guy. Uh, in the case when we have a C2, we have classical Newton equation, uh, but now we have inclusion, and of course the point is to compute everything there. And but Morris, again, yes. for this, can, can you use the subproblem like on the previous page? To yes, we can. Yeah, so you, you can, can, can use subproblem, that's right, yeah. It's good observation, subproblem is there, Sorry, you know, I'm talking about kind of schematic. I would like to, to give you a taste what yeah. is going on. And then if somebody is interested in detail, that you are most welcome uh, to look at uh, stuff and papers are available. Then uh, we have here the result that we need semi-smoothness and we need uh, metric regularity 
uh, of this mapping, uh, which we know the point-wise characterization of the star. Then we have uh, local convergence and superlinear rate of convergence without any appealing to tilt stability, because it's related to solving subdifferential inclusion, not minimization problem. And subdifferential inclusion, it is more general, of course, not only for minimization, for many other things, including equilibrium problem. Then in this case, when we don't have tilt stability, we consider metric regularity. And we have characterization from variation analysis. That's what we can do. Okay, then what about globalization? Globalization, uh, uh, you know, we use two types of globalization, global convergence. First, what I mentioned, quadrivity-based damped Newton algorithm. To begin with, we see one one function. And here we have such an algorithm. We again start with given point, arbitrary given point, talk about global convergence. We have some parameters, uh, sigma from one, zero, one half, and beta from zero, one. Then, uh, you know, if it's not stationary, we proceed with finding direction decay, uh, which actually uh, is defined by solving uh, this inclusion in terms of second order subdifferential or general adhesion. Again, we can do scalarization in this case, but general algorithm is given like that. Then, of course, we need to make sure that this inclusion is solvable, that we can find decay exists. Then we have this under natural condition. After that, we proceed when it's tau k equal to one, uh, but in a while we have this Armija rule, then we consider this, uh, this parameter beta, you know, when beta is taken from here, uh, uh, it is standard uh, Armija approach, and then uh, we take uh, uh, xk plus one, uh, which is obtained by this equation. Then here are some parameters, more in Wolf algorithm, but uh, in this case, we have everything nicely under, uh, you know, a positive deepness of the second order subdifferential. As I said, where that mapping is positive homogeneous mapping, right? If we have positive definiteness, that we are fine with uh, uh, well closeness and with good performance. We have global convergence and we have rate of convergence uh, uh, as before, okay? Uh, then it's written here, uh, uh, everything uh, uh, as we uh, can do it. Uh, but we need positive definiteness. Now we can do it positive definite only at the point in question. Uh, we can reduce to the point in question. This new development, which is not here, uh, but but uh, anyway, you know, it shows what do we have, uh, what kind of convergence. We have, you know, uh, in general, a linear convergence, Q-linear, but under semi-smooth star, we have superlinear. That goes like that. When we don't have super, when, when we don't have semi-smooth star, then uh, we have convergence and linear convergence. Uh, and uh, we may consider uh, in the case of tilt stable uh, uh, minimizer or even without this case under metric regularity, but only Q linear and R linear of convergence of iterates and Q linear for the values. But when we have semi smooth star, uh, then everything is globally converged with super linear rate. Okay. Then, uh, Another uh, algorithm which I would like to present, this algorithm uh, uh, which does not require positive depth, but require only positive semi-depth, which is much more relaxed assumption. In this case, you know, we proceed with some extension of regularized Newton methods. Then it is the same stuff like in classical case, the only difference uh, in this uh, inclusion in red, that in terms of standard uh, Hessian, when we have equality here, now we have this inclusion. That generalized Hessian uh, stands for standard Hessian. Then we have this algorithm, and we can proceed uh, with solving the stuff. Again, there are some results about solvability and convergence, including superlinear convergence, but under positive semi definiteness right? We have these results. And again, it's written, if somebody is interested, you can look at it. Okay, I just keep. Now, this class of what convex composition, uh, convex composite optimization. We have function which is convex and which is given in such a form. Actually here, you know, we have sum of two functions, both convex, but they have different, different flavor. 
when f is c2 converse smooth at least c is smooth but g is a bad function it is general prox regular function extended real variable but convex it called regularizator regularizator this actually happens in problem of machine learning actually we may have considered here a composition but for simplicity i present result here when g is just convex extended real variable function and it covers problem of constraint optimization then we consider here Prox mapping are uh, uh, related to just this uh, regularization term, to the bad term. And then we have this what called a forward backward envelope, FBE. This is uh, 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 this kind of extension of Moreau envelope, which introduced by some Danish, uh, Danish, no, not Danish, a Belgium, a Belgian group. Uh, of uh, uh, of mathematicians, uh, they introduced this notion of what backward uh, forward backward envelope. It was quite recently, but now it has become popular, especially in problem of machine learning. And then we uh, deal only with this bad function, with regularization, which is non smooth in general and extended real valid. We build this guy, and it also there are some results which says that when we have prox regular function, then we can proceed with this uh, 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 FBE uh, to uh, calculate everything. Uh, we consider here the class of problems when regularization is pretty general, but our function F is just quadratic. In this, you know, in this quadratic case, we have some better formula. Uh, 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 in the case when A is either positive definite or positive semi-definite, we can cover positive semi-definite uh, problems and then they compute all this data in such a form. Of course, the main, the most involved term here is second order, some differential of the regularizator, uh, which in the case of uh, problems of machine learning can be computed uh, more or less uh, uh, in standard way. It means we know how to do it. Okay, and then we have again result about convergence of this algorithm. Uh, you know, for linear convergence, super linear convergence, and the theory is nice here, but of course implementation depends on our possibility to compute second order sub differential. That's result for uh, regularized, regularized methods, and uh, here all the theorems which are given. You know. Then I would like to, uh, if have a little bit time, I would like to mention what do we have for Lhasa problem. We may consider different kind of Lhasa problems, but let's consider the standard Lhasa, original Lhasa problems, which was introduced uh, in 90s <coughs> by a statistician. Uh, what's his name? Tim Shivani. Yeah, you know, right here. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's what uh, he started, he's a well known statistician, Canadian uh, uh, American mathematician, and he can see a problem of this type. You know, here is this uh, guy. Uh, which is L2 norm, Euclidean norm here. And here we have this non-smooth function, L1 norm, one norm, right? This is standard uh, loss of problem. Now we can do it uh, not only for this uh, class of problem, but for more general problem. For example, we can consider here as well zero norm, you know, pseudo norm, and you have that a lot of stuff, which, uh, you know, has some application in particular, I am involved in some practical models uh, related to this L1, uh, L2. But for this class of problems, we have two algorithms. One algorithm which is generalized damped methods, damped methods, and another generalized regularized Newton methods. Then we can compute everything in terms of the given data. We don't have now any uh, problem with the second order subdifferential or prox mapping, you know, we have everything in our position. And then we can, you know, run this algorithm. We can run this algorithm and uh, for uh, you know standard situation uh, with uh, data from standard uh, uh, positive uh, the, 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 the positive stuff and we can compare and we compare with well known methods to solve this problem. One method is ADMM, uh, which is popular method uh, in optimization, actually first order methods. Another called FISTA. Uh, which uh, this uh, this message was introduced by uh, Steve Boyd and uh, Jonathan um, Eckstein in uh, this group. And this feast was uh, introduced, developed by Mark Tiburian, Amir Beck. And in uh, this more uh, you know, uh, 
newer methods which called SS and SS now, which was developed by uh, Defeng Sun. Uh, uh, Sun Defeng, uh, he is in Hong Kong, uh, and he has very strong group around him, uh, which actually got a big prize for this method. When we compare uh, our algorithm uh, with uh, the three, and we can involve actually some other algorithm of the first and second order about similar stuff. Then what do we have for this class of problems? We have better performance uh, in compared with ADMM and FISTA. I can show you this, uh, you know, calculation. Uh, and uh, uh, we have better performance. But in, uh, in the case of M, when greater or equal than N, we have better performance than even SS now. But when M less than N, it, it is dimension of matrix. Uh, then uh, we have better than FISTA and ADMM, but we have worse than SS now. SS now have better performance than our algorithm when M less than N. When M greater or equal than N, then uh, you know we have some advantages. And here, uh, uh, here uh, you can see uh, this uh, table uh, with all the data. Actually, much more uh, is presented in the papers. If you are interested, you may look at there. But this is illustration what we have uh, for different random instance uh, uh, selection of uh, of the data. Then exactly what I mentioned. And that it means that we have some room to improve. Actually, SS uh, uh, null, uh, this actually combined methods. It's used augmented Lagrangian uh, first uh, in dual uh, 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 dual area, which actually is finite dimension, uh, in, in lower dimension, and then on top uh, uh, semi smooth Newton. And in this case, uh, we have indeed better perfection. It means they, it means the function and his group have better performance than us, but uh, that's what we need to work more. Okay, then, uh, you know, everything can be found in the paper, which uh, uh, you can find here. Uh, this is uh, for uh, literature, which I use in my talk. And, you know, uh, this is what uh, uh, FISTA by uh, Amir Becker, Mark Tibur. This is for a semi smooth star Newton by Pfeffer and Alchata. That's our paper, which uh, published electronically in MOR. Uh, uh, this is for uh, local convergence of uh, uh, inclusion. And this paper, which uh, appears in mass programming with global convergence, more or less, uh, the result which I presented is based on this one. This is the paper of Defense Soon and his collaborators, uh, uh, Kim To and Lee, I don't know him, uh, which actually is this what SNAL, SNAL methods, which published in uh, SAM optimization. And uh, this was actually uh, some work which I did with uh, my students, uh, more theoretical about this uh, uh, notion of regularity, which is instrumental for constraint optimization. And uh, here, uh, if you hear about co derivative criteria, and here the books which are. Uh, uh, you know, you can find all the machinery, uh, not all for new, nothing about numerical methods, but some machinery for second order, for first order analysis. Okay, and uh, here, a uh, paper of uh, Polycana Rockefeller about yield stability. That's the book of uh, Terry Rockefeller, Roger Metz. And here, uh, Tip, uh, Tip Shirani, Tip Shirani uh, about Lassa. That's what kind of minimal. Uh, uh, literature, which uh, you know, I can present, and if somebody is interested in more details, and in particular in the papers which I mentioned, which not yet published, uh, I will be happy to uh, to send this to you. And anyway, Thomas will have all of that. Okay. Thank you. Very well, thank you very much for your attention. So, are there any questions? Yeah. I was thinking about how to interpret this uh, last result, but uh, because uh, your uh, algorithm performed better when M was greater than N. So this would be if you had like a lot of rows in the matrix compared yeah. to the dimension of X. Exactly. So uh, equal, uh, less or less on the equal. You know, yeah. that's what we have, right? That's exactly what you, you know, completely right. Your yeah. Right? So could you kind of interpret this in like if this, arises in the problem with right. like the amount of rows is how many 
let's say parameters that no, you no. have, and then x would be like the variables or actually uh, the interpretation is as follows. When we have this uh, m bigger than n, then we have kind of strict convexity, you know, and this actually it's kind of regularization factor, and we have positive semi difference right away. Mm -hmm. When we have uh, opposite case, we don't have the stuff. And then, in principle, in this case, you know, one of our algorithm even not well uh, well posed, it means we don't have solvability. It can be applied, but it is not justified. Yeah. And then we do not expect something good. Uh, for the second algorithm, we have solvability, everything there. But at the same time, when we don't have the strict convexity of this quadratic term, then we are in trouble and mm -hmm. we cannot proceed nicely. Although this method, which is now, you know, has this, you know, overcomes the trouble because they use two stage procedure. One procedure is augmented Lagrangian in dual uh, area, which, uh, you know, you have lower dimension, uh, and then they play with these numbers nicely, and then on top, semi smooth methods. Then what we have? Then uh, there are some room for development, and we are working in, in this direction now pretty strongly. Uh, we have a good group, uh, and uh, not only us, some other people, you know, working, and I hope that we can get something better. But at least, you know, the very good questions, and you indeed caught the issue. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we are talking about. Boris, there's a question by uh, Henry Volkovich. Oh, uh, Henry. Hi, Boris. Thank you for the talk. Um, can you say anything about, uh, because you're using like our major Goldstein type of uh, step lengths, can you say anything about situations where you get convergence with uh, step lengths equal to one, sort of like a pure Newton method? Uh, in, you know, in pure, met, you know, in pure Newton, you know, everything it should be even simple, right? Uh, Henry, uh, that's- uh, well, I, I mean, in, in this case, in the non-smooth, in the non-smooth case, are there any special situations where you can get away with step lengths one? Maybe yeah, it's not a step question. method, just convergence. Yeah, okay. You know, it means theory is the same. It means uh, when we have pure Newton methods, then uh, you think about uh, C11 or for proxegular, you have more general stuff, right? And what you consider your questions related to uh, problems when uh, uh, we are not looking for global convergence, uh, just for local convergence. Am I right? In this case, we have pure new Newton. We don't need to use any damped or regularized. Uh, that's what you are talking about or something else? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to understand when you can get away with, with without taking uh, without taking the, an Armijo step, for example, something like the Barzilai Borwein uh, step lengths, where sometimes okay. Okay. you don't okay. get you just get decrease, but you still get convergence. Yes. Okay. I think uh, or a subgradient method. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then uh, uh, then what we have? Uh, uh, let's look at. Uh, C11 at the beginning, right? You know, what do we have here? Uh, in the case of uh, C11, uh, uh, we have such a situation. Then, you know, step is one, and uh, we have this equation, uh, which inclusion, which actually allows us to find direction here. Uh, then we can find direction, and that's that's it. You know, that, that's the main part of this algorithm, to find this direction. Then we have the same stuff, no simplification in comparison with uh, in general situation, but we don't need this extra condition. Then for uh, superlinear convergence, without any armiha, for superlinear convergence, we need to have this semi-smooth star, you know, or semi-smooth star, uh, which is uh, uh, regarding a, a gradient method. If, for example, if gradient uh, mapping is uh, Lipschitz, uh, continuous, we, we need to have semi smoothness of this guy, or you know, and that's uh, we can proceed and we can get the same stuff for uh, superlinear convergence. For linear convergence, Q linear, we don't need anything like you know, this property of semi smoothness, and we can proceed straight uh, without any armijo, of course, and without any other assumption. But the, the issue, the challenge is to solve this inclusion. 
And this inclusion involves, you know, the sub-differential of scalarization, then how to proceed that's, that's, that's art. You know, we need to look at some specific structure and to see what's going on. But there are many examples how to work. And, you know, if I didn't send you, but I, I will send you, yeah, you know, these papers, you can find examples, you can see something, and if uh, some more specific questions appear, uh, I would much appreciate it. Okay. Anyway, it's okay? It's okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, so, Boris, I have a, a similar question. Um, if I think about uh, doing unconstrained minimization of a, a C21 function in a classical setting in RN, and I, I want to do a globalized Newton method. Yes, yeah, C21, that we have. So, to do. so twice new, twice continuous. Yeah, right. Uh, okay, right. okay, right. So, if I think about globalizing Newton with that right. for, for a line search, uh, if I remember correctly, you need a condition that says that the spectra of the, the Hessians are uniformly bounded along the entire uh, sequence to uh, essentially avoid the, let's say, the inverse of the Hessian just uh, blowing up basically as you go towards the, the solution. So is is that somehow hidden inside uh, not this method but the globalized generalized Newton method that you have? Because I didn't see that there. So either there has to be something that guarantees that either the step sizes don't go to zero or uh, maybe it's hidden inside semi smooth Newton star. No, actually, you know, uh, it is not uh, assumed. Yeah, uh, that uh, of course is the proof we need this kind of uh, interplay between boundness, you know. But we consider two cases is yeah. proof. when we have boundless, do, do not have boundless. And yeah. this extra condition which we impose here that uh, uh, agree uh, allows us to deal with uh, unbounded. Is that right? the tilt stability that gives it to yes, you? Yes, tilt stability or metric regularity. Ah, the ah, yeah, okay. You know, that's so it must be hidden right. inside the metric. Yeah, maybe it is yeah. here. But at the same time, for this class of uh, C21, yeah. uh, you know, I mentioned this to you now discussion, yeah. and I will send this paper with Pedro and Frano okay. that we consider this class of problems, and we consider mm -hmm. straight for, uh, you know, a right for a structural optimization mm -hmm. that we consider is a difference of two function, maybe not convex, yeah. uh, but two, uh, if two convex, if we have DC. But if uh, a no convex, you have just what we call difference programming. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, again, the same situation, one function is good, another function is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we can develop the star. But in this case, we can get what semi-Newton. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. It means the interplay between first and second order. And then uh, we can consider sum of two functions as a particular case of difference. Yeah. In particular, with under some kind of consideration, yeah. and then there are assumption, explicit assumption about boundless. You right. know, it means this appears. So it's hidden somewhere yeah. inside the exactly right. It's hidden yeah. some in the proof, but not in the assumption. And so, like with the line search that you have, you, you don't have an issue that uh, the step sizes might asymptotically go to zero. No, but you know, yeah. we can avoid this issue by extra assumption. But is the proof, yeah, right? Yeah. Is the proof. But uh, in, in principle, you know, it's allowed. You know, we yeah. don't we don't we don't put this completely in, mm -hmm. in, in, in the formulation, right? Mm -hmm. Again, you know, I will send you the paper. Yeah. You can see more details. But it's exactly what you said. You know, it is it is an issue. Any other questions? Um, if we could go back to the table with the CPU time and the iteration count. Um, so it's quite a remarkable difference in iteration counts for the different algorithms. Do you have any comments on, like, if you look at FISTO, it's like a 31,000 uh, iterations for the first one, and it, it varies quite a lot for the different examples where you have random, and when you solve random problems. Uh, but the iteration count, or the CPU time divided by iteration count, is also quite different for the different ones here, I suspect. So uh, could you comment on what would you expect to be the iteration count for your algorithm in general? Because here it varies from like nine to 1,800, depending on the size of the problem. OK, very good question, but I don't have an answer. You know, I couldn't say anything about it. It just, uh, you know, we have more computation, mm -hmm. but about the same picture. And it's a good idea to understand why, you know, so far. It, it not, but a very good question. I'll think more about it and compare. But what is you know, presented here is with random data, uh, data, and that's what we have. Yeah, 
Yeah, because I, I would, instead of doing CPU time, probably do time per iteration and then iteration count because that, that says more. Because then you say, okay, your system might be faster to invert and then it can get away with more iterations. Yes, that's that's very good question. Okay, that's very good one. I'll definitely think about it, and I I will talk with my uh, collaborator who more involved in numerical uh, things, you know, in this implementation stuff. Maybe they have some, but I will remember your question. It's very interesting and just to uh, to understand, you know, what's going on because I think for for the questions of your colleague, you know, I was able to explain the situation because it's based on some theoretical issue. But mm -hmm. your question is very interesting, but. Uh, Good idea to understand. Maybe Thomas knows. Yeah, maybe. And are the stopping conditions the same for all? No, oh, st static is exactly the same. Stopping condition is what we take this. Uh, okay, let me show you. It is exactly the same uh, as uh, here. We have you know this uh, uh, you know this uh, this uh, you know accuracy stuff, and uh, we take stopping condition exactly like uh, the thing. Uh, and his team used, you know, there's some formula for stopping, you know, that's what we have. It means this is pretty standard. You know, we have the same da data and the same uh, mm, uh, conditions uh, as an uh, uh, algorithmic comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So then let's thank Boris again. Much. It's a great pleasure. And wonderful questions uh, from uh, from you guys and from Henry, uh, which actually uh, you know important uh, uh, for me to understand because uh, a quite recent stuff which I uh, started to do, you know, because I, I was more theoretical stuff in variation analysis, but now.